Operator David, uh, me, no, that's not me. <laughs> Emmy is, uh, is here with us, and we will be starting promptly in now just about two minutes. So thank you again, everyone. Galahad is here with us. Uh, Dusty and everyone. Bill from Huntington, West Virginia, I believe that is, WV, West Virginia. Gab and others, this is online at Trader Central. We start promptly in now just about one minute. Mountain Girl just joined us. Mountain Girl. I love, I love the nicknames. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. We will be starting soon. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the sound of the trumpets, you know that means it's time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter today from the stockswoosh.com. Please welcome Melissa Amo. Thank you so much, everyone at Online Trader Central, and welcome. Yes, my name is Melissa Armo. Can everybody hear me? Sounds like there's an echo there with the sound. Hold on. Can everyone hear me? Is it good? Let me know if you can see the slide here with the arrow. My plan of action for today is to briefly talk for a few minutes here about some things that have to do with the mind, okay? Then I'm gonna give you my information if you wanna contact me and the, and the cyber special. Then after that, we're gonna, I'm gonna pull up my charts and then we're gonna just talk the rest of the hour about some trades and the market and then any questions that anyone wants to ask me uh, I think this is the easiest way to do it so I can get through this beginning piece and then we're gonna flip to the charts all right just so you know that's the plan of action for today so for those of you that don't know me I own a company called the stock swoosh and if you'd like more information you can email me at Melissa at the stockswoosh.com and I urge you to go and follow me on YouTube. You can Google YouTube and go under Stock Swoosh. I put tons of videos on there. Webinars, plays of the day, market reviews, lots of things on there. And then you would automatically get any update I would do in the market emailed to you directly if you actually are following me on YouTube. Now, I'm doing a free trading room access tomorrow. If you want to come to the free trading room tomorrow, you just click on this link. If you don't know the information or remember it, this will, this will be taped and online tonight, or you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com to get access to the room tomorrow. I start the rope in the room at 8.30. I usually don't start talking to between 9 and 9.30ish. Uh, so I'm going to give trading room access to everybody that came here tonight. And again, you can email me or Kathy if you don't remember this link. The lecture really today is about the fact that trading is fun and easy. And the interesting thing is that many of you may say, oh, what is she talking about or whatever. It is easy and it is fun making money very quickly in the strategy I trade. Now, when I started out, I had an attitude that trading was fun and easy. And guess what? Then I started losing because I didn't know what to do. And then I realized that the days that I made money, it was easy. And of course, it was fun to make money. And the days that I lost, it was hard. And as I started to piece together the strategy that I now trade, I will tell you that there is a direct correlation to the way that your mind works of seeing things that are easy and fun and seeing things that are not. 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, someone just asked. That's the time, okay? So the, the topic for today, I'm going to talk about briefly here before we get into the charts and the Q&A and the market, is that... There is a direct correlation between your ability to be able to be successful in the market and make money and your mindset, thinking that it is fun and easy. Now, just work with me here. Even if you're trading now and you don't know what you're doing and you've been losing, I want you to just set that aside for a minute and think about what I'm saying here. And, and then you'll be able to go back and even logically understand where you're at with your trading now. 
Now, this is a trade I did last week in HPQ. I didn't even get filled at the right price in this. I got filled late. And I actually didn't even hold this to the full on target. And I made over $4,000 in 10 minutes in this trade last week. This was Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. When you think about it and you say, you think, gosh, did, what's the first thing that pops up in your head? Is, do you think making $4,000 is 10 minutes is hard or do you think it's easy? You might think, gosh, that's hard, that's impossible. There's no way I can do that, you might think to yourself. Or you might think that is easy. How does your mind look at it? This is very, very important, okay? For me, I feel that this is easy. Why? Because I knew that this was a good trade. It was a short in HPQ. And once I bring up the charts, we're gonna talk more about this. It was a stock that had earnings and it gapped. But I, I saw it before I even took the trade. And in my mind, it was gonna play out easily. And guess what? That's exactly what it did, okay? And then I made a lot of money very quickly. I drew these circles here to show you that it is about having the focus. One of the most important pieces of trading that I think people miss out on, and I'm talking about day trading, all right, because that's what I do, is that they're all over the place. They don't know what to focus on, longs or shorts or uh, different, different strategies. One of the things that I teach in my class, because I personally do it, and I think this is a very valuable piece of the puzzle that people just miss out and one of the reasons they lose as day traders is that they're not focused enough on one thing. It's actually easy to be focused on one thing. It's harder to be looking at 25 different stocks at once at the same time. All I do is I get up and I look at one thing. So you can see the direct correlation of the easiness part of that, okay? Now, if I was, this is, okay, pretend this is your brain. So this is you. You get up in the morning, it's a Monday, and your brain is going looking at this thing, and then it does it. Then you get up on Tuesday, and you're looking at something completely different. I'm talking about a different strategy, a different directional bias, something different completely altogether. Then Wednesday, you're doing something else. Thursday, you're going long. Friday, you're going short. One day, you're doing a breakout. One day, you're doing a gap. One day, you're doing a climactic. Do you see how every day you get up and your brain is like, wait a minute, what are we focusing on today? I forget. Well, you don't really have a focus. Do you see here? And, and your results will be reflective of this. So you won't have the consistent results, whether it's $1,000 a day or $500 a day or whatever. Because you'll be like, am I going long? Am I going short? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? Where's the market? Am I doing this? I don't even know anymore. And you're, this is confusing for your mind. Whereas this is what I do. So this is me. I get up. I say, I'm looking for this based on my system. And I get it. Boom. And I focus on the dot and I make the money. Then I have another trade. Tuesday, I see it. It works. Good. Boom. One. Done. Make the money. Wednesday, see it. Do it. Same thing as every other day. Boom. Make the money. Thursday, do it. It doesn't work. I lose. And the black dot there is the loss of the day. But Friday, I get up, I look at the same thing. And then it works. So do you see here every day I'm getting up and looking for the same thing and the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. And even if one of them doesn't work, I'm not stressed out about it. The, the hard part about trading for people is the stress that relates to the brain, which translates into the losses of the money part of it. So when you're focused on one thing, it makes it easier for your brain. You never lose that much because you're not all over the place doing a million different things, okay? And you're, you're very focused. You just go, oh, and then if it doesn't work out one day, you're like, all right, fine, whatever. And you don't get stressed out about it. So the focus helps your mind be more relaxed, which helps you concentrate on the right thing to do so you don't make mistakes and lose more haphazardly. So how do you make it easy for yourself? It's about the replication. It's about the repetition, the rep replication. You're learning how to do it and then you're repeating it over and over and over and over and over again without hesitation. All human beings have memories, okay? You have a memory and I have a memory and these memories are stored in our subconscious and our conscious minds. They're stored in our brains and when we have stress in our brain we make incorrect decisions specifically about money, okay? Instead of relying on the information which, which is the information that's in the chart which is something you would learn from me in the class and you're seeing it right there live too. But then you're stressed out and you make an incorrect, an incorrect decision about what you're supposed to do because you're stressed. Have you ever noticed when you're down, you tend to lose more? A lot of people do. And when you're up, you tend to make more. 
And when you're down, you're stressed and unhappy. And when you're up, you're happy and relaxed. There is a direct correlation to that. And the correlation is back to this. It's in the focus. Because you're, you, if you have a system, you just get up and you do it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't stress you out. Okay? There's a correlation to that. Knowing what to do, having the focus, making the money and feeling happy rather than being all over the place. It's kind of like the saying, I'm sure everybody's heard of this. Have you ever heard the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer? Why is that? Because the rich have money and they're happy that they have money and they're not as stressed. When I think about making millions of dollars, I think about the idea of making millions of dollars to, to bring less stress into my own personal life and the people that I love so that I can provide for the people that I love and myself, not to be stressed out, that I wouldn't be able to have all that I need to provide for myself. So that's where the idea of having wealth means the less stress. Of course, it's great to buy luxurious things. No one likes to do that more than me. I live in Manhattan, but it's really about the idea of being able to provide where you don't have to worry about paying your actual bills to feed and clothe and house yourself. And so this, the rich keep getting rich and poor keep getting poor philosophy really has to do with the fact that people that are wealthy tend not to be as stressed about things as people that are poor. So there's a direct correlation there. And you can use this to help you do better with your trading. And you got to get control of your mind. But it has to do with the power of memory. And this is the reason why the information that I teach in my class works so well. Because the information contained in the seminar that I teach, a class I teach, because I'm going to tell you about in a minute before we flip to the cards, uh, to the charts, it works because of the pattern repetition. Once you learn it, you get up every day and you look for it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that pattern repetition that I discovered, that I teach in my Golden Gap system, that is what creates the opportunity for you to take action, trade, and make money with the information. And you have to do it without hesitation and without fear. And with the focus. And when you start to understand this, and I mean truly, really believe and understand this, you'll be amazed at how magical it is and how often it works. And you will see that it is possible to become a successful trader. And not only that, to make money trading and to do it with ease and have fun doing it and not be stressed. If you had, if you had money to burn and you weren't concerned about money, trading would be a lot more fun for you and you probably would trade better. And everyone says, well, you know, that's not reality. No, that's not. You got to use your own money to trade and set up an account. So then you got to get your head on right. There's no, there's no getting around that. You have to have your brain focused on the right things to do. And a lot of it has to do with staying true to the information and making it easy for yourself by just doing the same thing every day so that you're not stressed. And so you don't get up and say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do today. And then, and then it doesn't work, and then you lose more. you got to look at the same thing and know that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're going to get all the good ones that there is. And if one doesn't work, it's not a big deal. So this is really about self-empowerment that I teach. Now, I want to go over the information for the class before we go to the charts because we're not going to come back to these slides when we're done. We're just going to talk the rest of the time. The class I teach is a two-day class. It is this weekend, December 5th and 6th. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class tuition is $39.99, and retakes are free. The class is also online. I am offering a sale through tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Tuesday, the day after Cyber Monday. I'm giving people from tonight to sign up till tomorrow, where I'm offering 25% off, which, which I've never done. So if you want to sign up for the class, you save almost $1,000, but you've got to sign up by tomorrow, December 1st, and I'm not making any exceptions past that date. The class, like I said, is this weekend, and you can retake it as many times for free. So if you want to sign up now and you can't even do it this weekend, you can take it in January. At least you get the discount of $1,000 off because I never offer a percentage off of my classes because you can make $4,000 in one trade like I just showed you, okay? Now... Before we get off this, just if you want to write this down, this is the link for tomorrow. 8.30, you can be in the room, free live access. Now, I'm going to bring up the charts. While I'm doing that, does anyone, I have the pointer off, does anyone want to ask me if they have anything, any specific stocks or the market they want to talk about before I go over my things and I'll write them down. 
actually let's go over HPQ first. And while I'm doing that, everybody can write in the room any specific stocks or the market questions they want to have in there. Because the rest of the time I'm going to devote to talking about trades I did. Can you see it? Okay. Trades I did and then I, what I was going to talk about in case we didn't have a lot of questions. And, and the rest of the time is the market and any questions anybody has. So if you have specific questions about the market or stocks, anything, anything you want me to look at, long, shorts, whatever, I'll bring up the chart and we'll just go through them, your questions here live. So you can put them in the room while I'm going over the HPQ. Because as I said, this was the one that the most recent one from Wednesday. And I can see everybody's questions in the room. No one else can see the questions, but I can. So you can just plop them in there and I'll look at them. So remember I showed you that trade of the P&L. So this was Wednesday the 25th. So the stock actually closed on the 24th at $14.64. Do you see the square up there in the top left-hand corner? That's the closing price of the stock at the 4 o'clock at the bell on the, on the Tuesday. Then nothing happened here, and the stock actually had earnings in the morning. And the earnings were reported, and then it opened at 1317. Okay. Rallied up to 1327 was the high and dropped and broke, and it was a short. So you see this candlestick here, the red depicts that the stock price went down in the day. Look at the massive volume that came into it. That's what these bars are down here. And I shorted this, and that's where I made that money. Now, if I had held it longer, I actually would have made more. But it was a day before holiday, and it did go to the first target. But it was a beautiful, beautiful short. So what I do is, in my class, I teach people how to find that HPQ was a short that day so that I just take the trade and get very quickly out. It's the focus, because you only need one trade like this a day. You know, if you're making $4,000 every day, you don't, you don't really need to do anything else. $4,000 is enough for people to make in a week and pay their bills. So you, you have to be focused. And again, getting back to the focus, it's the ease of it knowing I'm just going to do this. And, and, and it's fun. If it works, I'm up money really quickly and it's easy. I focus on it. It works. The system tells me it's good. Now, what if it hadn't worked? It did. But what if it didn't? Well, then, then it still would have been easy because I just would have been out. And that's it. I would have taken one loss. So if you take five trades a week, you're going to make money. Because if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal as long as you follow the system. And this is what makes it easy for people. You're looking for the same thing every day. But it's in a different stock every day. Okay? But you're looking in the market, and what I do is I scan. So I get up in the morning. And I go through this thing here. I like to focus on the shorts. Okay, I do teach a bullish class, but I focus on the shorts. So over here we have the losses in the NASDAQ and the New York Exchange over here. So there's 40 stocks I can look at scanning in the morning. These are, these are from the day. But in the morning when I get up out of bed at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock, whatever time you want to look at them, all these ticker symbols here I'm going through and I'm looking, boom, boom, boom. And I'm scanning them to see if anything is gapping. Because again, my strategy is based on gaps. What is a gap? It just means when the stock closes at one price at four and then opens at a different price the next day. For example, today, HPQ closed at 12.51. I don't know where it's going to open tomorrow, but probably not going to open exactly at 12.51. Does it mean it's a gap I short tomorrow? No, not necessarily. But if it does gap, you could rate it. So I rate things each day and things gap for many reasons. Some things gap for the earnings, some things gap for news, some things gap because Kramer talks about it and then it gaps. You never know, okay? All right, I will look at those those ones for those people that asked me about a couple stocks. Now let's go back and see where the actual trade was on the 25th. So what I do is, as a day trader, I look at the daily chart with my system, and that's what I teach in the class. How do you know HPQ is a short? See if it's gapping. If you find it on the list, then you rate it per system. I have a 26-point rating system. I'm not looking for a perfect score. I'm looking for 20 or more, so I give a cushion. If it rates 20 or more, I, I say it's good going in the direction of the gap. So if it's gapping up and rates 20 or more, it's a long. If it's gapping down and rates 20 or more, it's a short. So that's what tells me HPQ is a good one. Then what do I do? Then after that, then I wait for the market to open. I do not take a position pre or post market. You could. Here I'm going to show you on the day of the HPQ. All of this was at night. And then do you see in the morning, a bazillion peoples were in this. This is all in the morning. There was a lot of volume that was in this stock here in the morning. 
These were trades, but I'm not in here. I'm rating the gap. So it actually had a lot of volume in it before it opened. I forget how much exactly, but it was a good amount. And then I wait for the stock to actually open and I shorted it. I shorted it right here at 931. And then boom, and then, and then I was out. And it did go a little bit more as I said, but I was in this right here. And then I was out of the trade literally in 10 minutes. And that is easy. So the part of the ease also of what I teach is the fact that I'm not, I'm not under the gun that, that long. I'm, I'm every, when you're in a trade, you're at risk, even if you're up, because it could go against you. Now I put in a stop, put in a hard stop here. But the great thing about what I do that makes it so easy is I'm in and I'm out. 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 I chunk it out. That it's just so easy. Just take it in, out, boom, boom. And you can get in the whole thing and get all out into the first drop. Now you can lower the stop to try to get down more. You still would have gotten taken out here, but I didn't do that. I actually just take it, took it and boom, I took the whole thing. And I usually don't lower my stops unless I'm concerned about something like the market rallying against me, but this just, you're just in it and you're right out. So how do you do this? You, you would look in the morning or at night, sometimes things gap at night to try to see what this HPQ was doing. And again, it pops up on the list. And you can look at any of these. Lulu was one that gapped today we can talk about next. So the ease is that I'm looking for the same thing over and over and over again, which is the 26 points I teach in the system. Then I wait, then I'm expecting to short it, then it sets up, and I teach the setups in the class. If it sets up, I take it, put the stop, get the drop, and I'm out. That's it. What if it doesn't work? I get stopped out. Boom. That's it. We're done. End of story. And even when I get stopped out, it's painless, really, because of the fact that it happens so quickly. Of course, I don't like to lose money, but I'm just saying I, you can't fight you can't fight the stock you cannot fight these things okay you can't do it so you make it easy for yourself with just saying it worked or it didn't and if you have a system that works you will make money because of the five days you should you should either make money every day or at least four of the five and maybe one day you won't trade like today i didn't do any trades on a monday it was slow it was the day after holly weekend so some days you may not trade that's another thing too you make it easy for yourself it's like, what, what was there to do today? Nothing. Nothing in the morning was there to do today. So you don't trade. You make it easy for yourself. Something doesn't meet the criteria, well, you're just not doing anything. That's it. You can't move these stocks. You can't fight them. Even if you take the size I do, you can't move them. Nothing's going to move these stocks other than real huge amounts of money. So you have to have the focus, and you can't fight them. Baika was saying the stocks you pick difficult to short, i.e. not enough shares to short. Uh, no, I will tell you though that I pressed the button to get filled in this and the ECN that I picked, okay, didn't fill me full and then I caught it and I said, <gasps> and then I quickly, quickly, quickly killed the rest of the position, took another ECN and got it and then, then it dropped. So I actually got this late, but at least I got it because the ECN I picked didn't, didn't get me in. So I have a couple different ECNs set up with hotkeys. But as far as getting short access, I would say I get, a, if I trade 1,000 stocks in a year, I get 999 of them, or 998. You can't short stocks as a day trader, and you shouldn't be a day trader at all unless you traded a good broker that actually has access to shorts. So it's like once in a blue moon, I don't get something. But I had a lot of size in this, so the first time I pressed it, it didn't hit me with the ECN, and then I got filled, because I quick killed it, and then I grabbed it again with some different one. So you have to have a couple different ECNs set up too. So that should not be a problem. No one's, no one's sure, no one, no one is a day trader that I would teach or even myself is like looking to take a 100,000 share lot position in something. So no, you should have no problem at all getting shares to short. And HPQ was not a pre-borrow on Wednesday anyways. All right, does anyone have any other questions of this before I answer, uh, look at some of the stocks that some people are putting up? Ray wants to know about JetBlue. And we'll go back to HPQ if anybody has questions on that. What's your question on this? What do you want to know about this? Do you have a specific question or you just want to know what I think of this stock? Ray is asking me about JetBlue.
you have a specific question or you just want me to tell you what I think of it? JetBlue is in an uptrend. JetBlue is a long. JetBlue is not a short. JetBlue will rally with the market when the ra market rallies. What, do you have a specific question about this here? There's nothing wrong with this chart at all. In fact, this actually looks pretty darn good. This, this day of this gap here, this is when the market gapped down, this barely gapped down, and boop. In fact, let's just look at it. The day that the market gapped down here, the stock dropped like everything else on the planet, but it didn't drop that much. This actually held extremely strong now that I'm looking at this, if you want my professional opinion here. In my opinion, this stock is very strong and held beautifully on the day of that gap down in the market. What I think of it is that it's a long, it's in an uptrend. That's what I think. And even though this gap down, like everything else, on the day of the 20, 24th, it, it, it could have, this could have been worse. This could have been a lot worse. It held really well. Well, you have to have a strategy. I don't, know, I don't know what your strategy is for buying this. I don't just buy something out of no man's land. You have to have a stop. You have to have a target. You have, to have a, you have to have a stop, even if you're doing a long-term swing trade. But actually, if you're doing this for a long-term swing trade, you have to have a stop. Where's the target? The target is, I mean, the next target, long-term target's 3031 to make a new high with the market. There's a long-term target on JetBlue. I don't know when it gets there. I don't know when the next earnings are in this. I don't know if it's already reported for the end of this year, if it's not going to report to next quarter until 2000. A 16. I have no idea when the earnings are in this, but I my strategy I trade is gaps. I don't buy support or short resistance, so I wouldn't buy anything in this until it gaps, and it has to be a good gap that rates more than 20 points. It would have to be a gap up because you're not buying gap downs. You would wait and buy a gap up if it rated 20 points or more when it gaps. It could gap for a lot of different reasons, but right now the stock isn't gapping. It fell in today with the market. So if you're just buying this here today, again, I don't buy pullbacks. You're just kind of buying it. And where do you put the stop? Well, today, if you bought this, you'd have to put the stop under the anomaly day. And that's a far, far stop. That's an $8 stop. So I wouldn't do that. Wait, wait till it gaps is a good gap. And then you can buy it on the gap. And then you'll know exactly where it's headed immediately. Because the problem is right now, if you buy this, it could come all the way down in here. You could be down before it goes up. And that's the difference about buying pullbacks in, into support or buying gap ups. For example, if you're buying a pullback into support, how do you know where to buy it? Well, it's into support here, it's holding, but it could also come down to here's a level of support, here's a level of support, here's a level of support, and the 200 period moving average are 22. But also, guess what? This is a level of support at 21 something. This is a level of support here at 18 something. I could show you 25,000 levels of support in this. $15. So where are you putting the stop? If you're just buying it in a pullback, it could pull all the way back down here. And it's still long, by the way, if it pulls into here. But 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 the thing I'm trying to say is you're going to be way down until you're up. The nice thing about the strategy I trade, whether it's a bullish gaps or bearish gaps, is you should be up whether you're day trading or swing trading or core trading almost immediately. Almost immediately you should be up. In fact, immediately you should be up. Even if it's an overnight trade, you should be up immediately because the price of the, of the entry counts. The entry price counts so you don't suffer. This is the whole thing I'm trying to tell you about the easiness of the fun and easiness. Is this a good long? Yes. Where can it pull back to? I have no idea because it won't be fun. If it pulls all the way in, if you buy this today at 2473, knowing that it's a long because it is a long. If you buy this today at 2473 and it pulls all the way in to 22, you're going to be down $2.70. That will not be fun. You'll get up every morning, look at your account, and cry. And cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And then it'll go all the way down to 20. And then you'll say, I can't take it anymore. I'm tired of being down in this. And then the day that you do that, within a week from that or the next day from that, it'll gap up to 27. And then you'll cry again because you got out of it and you could have made money. And you lost in it. So the, the, the suffering that you put yourself through, that people put themselves through in buying pullbacks or shorting resistance is, is, is insanity, actually. It's not a good entry point. The entry counts and the directional bias because you're not going to make money or be able to hold through it with the stress of it and the suffering that will come along because you can't predict the timing of something. But with gaps, you don't have to predict the timing. You, it, it's, it's, gapping, it's gapping the day you take it. And therefore, if it rates well, you just take it. Boom. You take it today. 
And then even if you're in it for a long-term trade, you'll, you'll know what it's going to go or where it's going to be or where the next target is from the gap so that you don't have to suffer. And the entry is then much, much better than buying into support because there's 27,000 levels of support in this chart and any chart or more than that till it breaks, which this doesn't look like it's going to do, but I'm just saying. You're looking at it since it was $4. Well, if you bought it at four dollars, you're up money. Did you buy it at four dollars? I don't. I don't. I. Did you buy it at four dollars? If you bought it at four dollars, you're up. If you did not buy it at four dollars, then, then you could have bought it. I mean, you could have. Here's why I would have bought this. If I was you, which I'm not, I'll tell you exactly where I would have bought this. First, I'll tell you where I would have bought it, and then I'll find it. Here. I mean, this is it. Actually, this is. I just my eye goes right to it. There's the buy in this. You could have gone long the stock here, not at $4, at 15 This is a bullish gap that happened last year, and this was a good long. And you know what? It didn't even break on the anomaly day, this gap. I'm so good at reading these gaps. This is what you learn from me, people. Here's the buy in this. Here's the long in JetBlue that you could have been long this right in here. There it is. Low of this is 14.20. Has it even touched a boot of that? No. Not even on the anomaly day. The low of the anomaly day is 16 something. That was a long position in this and a bullish gap right in there. And if you went long this in here, it was a good trade. That's when the chart went from a downtrend into an uptrend. Again, I teach this in the gap class, but there's the long trade. You would never have been down in this. Not even the day that the market gapped down and fell off a planet, you wouldn't have been down. You would have still been long the stock and up money. And you would just be holding it until it breaks a new high. And that's the next target. But there were other targets in between, like $20 would have been a target. I don't know how long you would have been in it, but there's the buy, not at $4. You would have been buying a stock in a downtrend for a long-term trend, which people do. I don't do that. But you could buy this for an overnight trade here. It was last year. It was a year ago. It was a year ago. It was 1128. A year ago, right now, today. Look at that. What are the chances? That was it. You did buy it at $4 and you sold it. You sold it right when I would have been buying it. Here's the momentum. Here's the momentum. Here's the lift. Let's just look at this. this is a, Ray Ring brings up a good point. If you bought it at $4, it's sloshing, it's sloshing, it's sloshing, it's sloshing, it's wiggling, it's jiggling, it's rallying, but not really. Here's the momentum. Look at this here. This is a great point. Do you see the moving averages actually help you there, but I don't use these to trade. I've got them on my charts, but I don't really use them to trade. But this really depicts what I'm trying to tell you. This is making an, a, a, like a scoopy scoop. But this is like, it's like a vertical, it's like vertical up to the sky. This is the momentum. Look at the moving average. It's showing you what I can see in the, what I can see in the price. From the time of the point of the entry price that I would have gone long on this, it went shoot. Whereas you went long on this and you're like, do do boot do boot do boot do boot do boot do boot do 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 You got out of it right before it took off and went woo. Do you see this? And you can tell from this because this literally is almost like a vertical. This is what a lot of people do. So the. You made money, and I'm happy you made money, but I never would have bought it at four dollars, and you got out of it when I would have been getting in it to go long. When all the momentum came in and all the profit was there, because from four dollars to four, from four dollars to fourteen, there was a ten dollar profit. But from fourteen to the most recent high, which was twenty seven, there's more profit, and the potential for the stock to now make it get over the high as well, over thirty dollars. That's a very good question. This was a good chart to be an example for, and I should talk about this in the room for the people that have taken my class, because this is a great, great example. Uh, let me go back here to the questions. Mrs. Miss Swoosh, that's a nice name. Thank you, Randall. Do I have a gap system for ES, S&P mini futures contracts? You, if you learn my system, you can apply it to anything that is gapping, so you can use it for ETFs. You would have to know how to do the future trade. I'm not actually teaching you how to do a futures trade. You specifically yourself would have to know how to take that trade as a futures trade or an options trade because you can do options and things as well. And so you can do that. Same thing like here with the JetBlue. Like if it makes sense to do an option in this, you could do an option in this for long because it's a long. But I'm saying to you that you'd have to know how to do the future. You could apply it to the SPY uh, ETF 
to do the future. So the system is the same. There's only one system. It's a gap rating system that's a 26-point rating system, and there's one system, and you apply it for everything. It's just the gaps in the market or any ETF or any stock that trades, and you apply it, and that's it. How long you're in it is going to determine what your targets are because obviously the long-term target in this is many, many different targets for JetBlue versus a short-term target for the day. So that would be different. But as far as the strategy, it's just the gap and the 26-point rating system that is a, it's applicable. But that's why it's good because you can use it for a lot of different things, depending on how much money you want to risk and how long you want to be in the trade or how short you want to be in the trade, which I like to be in them short. When you short the stock, you won't be liable to pay the dividend. No. Wouldn't you rather be long a stock to collect the dividend? Well, that you can be long a stock and collect the dividend, but I'm in and out of it on the day before four o'clock. So even if I go long something, I'm not actually I'm not actually getting a stock certificate mailed to my home that says Jeff Blue. Now, if I actually would actually buy it, it'd be different. I'm not I'm, I'm trading as a day trader. This is what I do. You can you can do whatever you want with my system, but I'm saying what I do is I'm actually shorting a stock. I'm saying I'm borrowing it for the day and I'm giving it back. So I'm actually it's a it's a temporary thing. Therefore, you don't actually collect any dividends at all, even if you go long it. No, you don't. That's a different philosophy of thinking that's more like investing. You're thinking of an investor mentality, Bico. I'm thinking of a trader mentality, which is more fun. If we're talking about the funness, it's more fun because I get the money much, much faster. Because you aren't going to make $4,100 on a dividend in any stock or anything or anything at all on the planet in 10 minutes in one day. So you see the difference. It's more fun, but you have to get it right. How do you do it? By having the focus and then doing it. But you're thinking investor mentality. You could do all of the above. Day trade, swing trade, core trade futures, options, and, and collect the dividends and own the stock in anything. But the strategy is the same in everything I do. It's the gap, and the gap has to rate 20 points or more per the 26-point rating system, whether I go long or short. And I'm only going long up gaps that rate per the system and shorting down gaps that rate per the system. And you see how my mind is like the circle. Circle, 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 circle. Um, okay, David, I think I did answer the one question. What is your average ROI per stock if you use the gap? up or down strategy can you then apply to an option yes you can apply to an option that's what I was saying you can do that if you want to and if the stock is expensive for example obviously <laughs> something like Google okay it would make much much more sense to do an option if you saw something in Google and you wanted to do something with this then it would be to do the outright long position in this which this is a long, I mean, I haven't looked at this for a while, but let's just look at Google. Yeah, so this is a long. So this would be one where, you know, you'd be better to do an option in something like this. Target for this is $1,000 in the next 12 to 16 months of Google. I just saw it there. Look at that. Wow. Some of these things that are just absolute monsters in the market are going to run like the dickens when the market makes a new high and really goes to the numbers that these these stocks and google is one of them these leaders in the market are gonna really really pound it out i mean they are just gonna just run to the moon it'll be like infinity and beyond and google will be one of those leaders into 2016 because I just saw here 12, uh, 1250, 1200, 1000. These are targets for these stocks. And this thing just split before. And look at it. It's already almost back to the original, the number from before, before the split. I mean, talk about money, 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 money. Huge, huge leader in the market. Um, so the rate of return happens to be, let's go back quickly to the HPQ. David is saying about the rate of return. I'm looking at it. Again, you're thinking investor mentality. I'm in and I'm out. The correct entry for this was to short it right here at 13.10. Stop was 1330. So I'm risking 20 cents. 20 cents. So if the stock moves, and I'm just trying to make this easy, uh, 
If the stock moves 60 cents, that means I make three times the amount. Where did it move? Well, I got out of it here, okay? So actually it did move 60 cents here. But if you stayed in it down here, you actually could have made 80 cents. I got out here. So either way, if you make 60 cents risking 20 cents, that's a great trade. If you make 80 cents risking 20 cents, that's a great trade. This is not an investor mentality because I'm not outright purchasing the stock. I'm borrowing it based on leverage that you get from a broker wherever you trade. As a day trader, I'm in and I'm out quickly. So I'm thinking the pennies, the pennies of the difference where I'm shorting it, where I'm putting the stock. I'm risking 20 pennies. And then I size myself accordingly. 5,000 shares and 20 pennies is 1,000 bucks risk. 10,000 shares and 20 pennies is $2,000 risk. And then you make the size. So if the stock drops a dollar, you have 5,000 shares, you make five grand. If the stock drops two dollars, you have 5,000 shares, you make 10 grand. How much did you risk? 1,000 bucks. If the stock drops a dollar, you make $10,000, you risk 1,000 bucks, it means you made $10 for every dollar you risk. You cannot you just this is completely there's just nothing like this what I do in the amount of time that I do it for the amount of money that you can make and it's about the pennies so it's not the investment because I'm not investing anything in this for any length of time for anything I'm just taking the trade and I'm out and the the I have a certain amount you could say I'm investing it, but I look at it as this is the amount that I'm willing to risk. I'm willing to put up, I'm willing to put up, boom, the amount of the pennies, the difference between the entry and the stock. And in this case, it's 20 cents. So how much did I like this? Well, I liked it a lot because I had 8,500 shares of this. And that's basically all I got filled and then I just killed the rest because it dropped. But I liked it a lot. Boom. Okay. So it's not investor mentality, it's a, it's a day trading mentality. Is your stop loss a call option? No, I'm putting it in a, in, a, in a hard stop, it's a limit order. I'm not doing options or puts. You could actually, again, you could do options and things if you want to. You still are using the same strategy, it's the gap. I don't know what this would have, how this would have priced out. I don't know, maybe you would have made more than me on the day if you had done an option. Maybe you would have made less. I don't know. Either way, you have a set risk. Make sense? Uh, okay, let me just see here. Does that answer your question, David? So I'm looking for three. Does every trade go three? No. Some go one. Some go two. Some go more than three. Like this actually went four, but I didn't say it all the way down to there. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. And anybody else, ask me some more questions here of the ones that you have. Let me look at the ones from E. Nicoman. He wants me to look at CMG. Here's another one here that, again, is very expensive. Boy, you people like these very expensive stocks. Chipotle, let's look. What's your question? Before I tell you what I think of it, what is your question? Just outright, what's your question in this? What do you want to know? E. Nickelman has a question about CMG. What is your question? And anybody else have questions about specific stocks or the market, let me know. And then we're going to talk about the market. What do you want to, what do you want to do with this here? Are you in this or you're not in this? Are you thinking about doing this? E. Nickelman, are you there? I know you asked the question a while ago. Let me just scroll up. Yeah, you're there. What do you want to know about this? Another market leader? Another stock that's still strong? Another company that will rally and make a new high with the market as well? I don't think this does it before the end of the year. That's a stretch. I don't see that happening. It could. It might. I have no idea. I don't know when the next earnings are out on this. Is this chart broken? The answer is no. Is this still strong? Yes. I don't know what you're doing with this. This isn't a short. Could you have shorted this uh, for some of these days? Oops. Hold on. Could you have shorted this in here? Some of the days in here, you could have shorted it. It actually gapped down here. I don't know what the reason was. I don't know if this was the earnings. It was back in October on the 21st. But if you try to short this here, guess what? You didn't make any money, you lost. It rallied on the day as a day trade and moved them down the next day. 
but you could have followed this through here on the second day as a short. But either way, in the long-term picture, it's not. But as a day trade, on the day, you wouldn't have made money. Now, if you did as a swing trade, you would have. But look here again and gap down here again and fail. Failed on the next day of the gap down here on November 2nd. And if you short this as a day trade here, you didn't make any money. I didn't do this. I'm, I'm not shorting a stock that looks like this of a $600 strike price. But either way, if you shorted it here as a day trade, you'd lost. Now, I don't know what these gaps would have rated. I, I didn't look at this. But I will tell you that this is not a short in the longer term trend. It's still a long. It looks, it looks kind of sticky in here for this day. Uh, but it's really actually, I hate to tell you, but it's not doing anything wrong. There, I just told you what I thought of it. I think it's not doing anything wrong. I think it's, you know, it's unfortunate it had that big red bar there. I don't know what happened the day of this happening here. It looks like a news thing or who knows. But, 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 but if you're long it at a good price, you're still at money. If you shorted it, you shouldn't be at money in it. And... I mean, if you shorted it I w and you're up money, I would take it out because I don't really see this doing anything drastically lower. Could it? Yes. Would, would I be surprised? Yes. Why? Because it's still in an uptrend and the market's strong and really this is a very popular company as well. But you just have to watch the gaps. Right now, there's nothing to do in this. If you're already long it and you're profitable, stay in it. But if you were long it, you could have taken it out here when it gapped down on this day. And if you didn't, you could have taken it out here on this day when it had the big day, if you were out money. And you could just get back in then. So if you're, if you're not in at all, there's nothing to do with this. Right now, there's no play in this at all, but it's still in an uptrend. Do I spend much time worrying about the entire market's direction? No, but I do look at the market every morning because of the fact that I'm running a live training room and I've gotten into the habit of doing that and actually has helped me become a better trader because the market is very challenging to read. It's one of the most challenging things to read is the QQQs and the SPY charts because the market moves, moves a lot and it gaps every day. Unlike stocks, the market really seriously does gap every day and a lot of things move with it. And it's very challenging to read and most people that even trade that are good traders get reading the market wrong. I'm, I'm, I've become a better trader by the fact that I've chosen to look daily at the market. The room forced me to do that, not, not by choice of my own, but it has improved my trading like a thousand percent. So I'm glad I've done it and, and, now I, and now it's not going away. I'm just really good at reading the market. It dropped $70 because of the E. coli scare a couple weeks ago. Well, that's interesting. Well, there we have the answer to that. Um, your question on F MFRM, which went down today because it may acquire sleepies. I didn't even look at this today because I didn't trade today, but I'll look at it. Well, it looks like this is gapping up. This is gapping up right now. This is not gapping down. It's gapping up. It looks like it closed tonight at 49.33, and right now it's gapping up to 54. So this is not, this is gapping up. This is a, this is a bullish gap in MFRM. I have to rate this. You, you could, you could rate this. If you did my class, you could rate this, but you'd be rating this to go long. Actually, this doesn't even look half bad here now. This actually looks not half bad here. I mean, I'm not going to go through this because I don't have time, and I only have 10 more minutes to talk, but this actually doesn't even really look half bad here. This actually uh, doesn't look half bad. This might, I mean, I have to go through it, but this actually might rate well enough to go long tomorrow. This actually doesn't, doesn't look half bad at all. Kind of low volume, which I don't really like, should have the volume in it tomorrow on the live day. I don't know what time. You know, I, I don't know what time the volume would come in this or if it come in the pre-market. This is really actually probably good. I'd have to rate it. And that's where I know the rating system tells me, so it's no second guessing myself. But off the cuff, eyeballing this now, it's a live gap. The stock closed today at 49 something, it's gapping up to 54, and it does look like this is possibly a long tomorrow. I don't know where this gaps in the morning. I don't know the volume in it. If you had taken my class, you could rate it. If it rates over 20 points, you go long it. And, and, and if it does work out as a long tomorrow, I'll tell you, it's, it's going to run. Because there's, there's some shorts trapped in that in there. Um, but your system picks out winning trades regardless of market direction. Yes. Winning trades. I, I can 
conservatively say around 70 to 75 percent. There's times when I feel like I'm on a roll and I'm, and I'm over 80 percent. But, you know, it's like anything else. The market is cyclical, okay? I'm talking about just trading in general, not the market itself. But I'm saying there's times where it seems like it, we're just like it's boom, 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 boom. And, and, and it's my win ratio is well over 80 percent. There's people in the room that track it. I don't. And then there's some months I might only have a 70-75% win ratio. But in an overall 20 trading days as a day trader that you trade per month, you should not lose that many. If you do, then, you, then you're not profitable. But I will tell you that if you have a system that works even 51% of the time, or 50% of the time, where you're making three risk units, and the other 50% you lose one, that's a profitable system. I have way better odds than that whether it's 70 or 71.2 or 85 and a half because of the money that I make of the amount that it moves in the trades that I take. Does this make sense? So if you lose in one trade, even half the time, one risk unit, and the rest of the time you make three risk units or even two risk units, you are a profitable trader. The problem is people don't make money even that much in the market because they don't have a focus and they're all over the place and on top of that they are horrific with their sizing so they'll take a trade like hpq and they will risk two hundred dollars the trade's beautiful falls off a planet goes to the dream target right away and they'll risk two hundred dollars Let's just say this moved a dollar to make it easy. So let's just say it moved a dollar. It almost did move a dollar here from the end trade. So let's just say they took, they risked $200. They took 1,000 shares and made 1,000 bucks. Next trade might be Lulu, which did not work out in the morning today. Did not rate for the system. It was 17. It wasn't 20. So I didn't do it. I didn't trade today. But if you had shorted Lulu today, you would have got stopped out. If you had shorted Lulu today, you would have had to retake it a bunch of times before it finally fell, which was later in the day, which I don't trade later in the day. In the afternoon, I only trade the morning. But if you did the Lulu today, which you shouldn't have done because it didn't rate well, but let's just say you did Lulu. No, oh, I don't even know where to put it. Let's just say you did it. Let's just say you did it and you got stopped out. Okay, let's say you did Lulu and you got stopped out and you didn't risk $200. You risked 1000 and then, and you should have only risked 200. So if you have one good trade and you make 1,000 and one bad trade and you lose 200, you're up $800 still, profitable from two trades. One loser, one not loser. I'm talking about the 50-50 equation here to give you the example. But if you take Lulu and risk 1,000 and you take HPQ and risk 200, then you're break even. You're still not even down actually. And that's really screwy sizing. Because if you had taken HPQ and risked 1,000 and taken 5,000 shares and it dropped a dollar, you could have made five grand. And, it, and Lulu, if you lost and risked 1,000, you would have been down 1,000. You still would have been up four grand. So a lot of traders have to get their sizing right. But, you, but none of it matters if you don't have a system. None of it matters at all. That just exasperates, people miss sizing themselves, exasperates the already difficult time that people have because they don't have a focus, which is the point of the lecture, is to make it fun and easy for yourself by having the focus to simplify it, this whole trading thing. But even when you have the focus, you still have to size yourself right because I'm not responsible for that, you are. I teach you what to do, but you darn well got to do it and it's really simple arithmetic and I can't believe that people don't know how to do arithmetic. I don't know what happens after we graduate high school. Nobody knows how to do math anymore, but you, you gotta remember. And if you don't, then just buy a calculator, which is cheap. Uh, let me just see here. Let me just see if there's any other questions. There was something else I was gonna say. Oh, I wanted to talk quickly about the market. I wanted to talk quickly about the market here. Actually, let's look at the cues, because I didn't see how we closed today. Um, and then if we have time, I'll look at the Netflix. Uh, and anybody else has any other questions? And just to quickly review, I'm doing a live trading room tomorrow. If you want the information, email me at melissathestockswish.com for the link, or it's going to be in the webinar tonight, or you can email Kathy for it as well to come into the room tomorrow. I have no idea what we're going to get. 
but you can come in and see. And if you're interested in the GAP class, again, it's this weekend. So the 25% off Cyber Monday special is running today and tomorrow. That's it. Saved you almost $1,000, and that's great. And even if you can't do the class this weekend, you could sign up and do it in January. At least you'd get the 1000 off. Now, let's look at the market. Is it unusual for you to have days where your system does not have a trade? No, it's not unusual at all. There are slow days in the market. There will be days between the Christmas holiday, between Christmas and New Year's, that no one should be trading. Friday was a day not to trade, in my opinion, which was the Black Friday. And uh, like today, I didn't do anything a day after a holiday. So you don't know, but I will tell you, it's usually after or before holidays. But again, that's all part of having a system to make it easy for yourself. It's impossible to make money if the stocks aren't moving. There was a days last week, even a Monday of last week, of the Monday of the Thanksgiving holiday, people were already off all last week. Monday, I looked at the market. I, th I thought it was closed. It wasn't, but it looked like it wasn't even moving. <laughs> you know, you can't really... I think it did finally move then and, and fell in the afternoon on the Monday, but you can't, you can't make money unless stuff moves, and you're not going to have stuff move without volume and people in there. And if they're off in the holiday, then who's moving the market? No one. Anyways, let's go here and look at the cues. So the overall market trend is up. It's bullish, and we will make a new high in the QQQs for the calendar year before the end of the year. Previous high was 115.42, so the next target in the QQQs, we're almost there. 115.50 and then beyond. Will we make a brand new all-time high over 120.50 before the end of the calendar year in the queues? That I'm not sure of. That that really has to start getting its butt moving like now, this week. And I'm not sure so sure we do that this week. So we will eventually get to that point, but but I don't we may not do it before the end of the calendar year or over 120. I don't know. We could have an end of the year rally into the end of the calendar year, a bullish Christmas rally or whatever you want to call it. I don't know if we pull back again before we push over the area or if we rally over 115, 150 this week and then just go straight up there or if we go over 115, 115, 50 and then pull back again before we push up again. But look for a bullish move between now and the end of the year in the market. There's nothing here that shows any signs of weakness. So all these stocks that some of you have been asking about that are very, very strong will go nicely or should go nicely with the market unless something happens with them. Um, I'll look at Netflix. And does anyone else have any other questions about gaps or my class or the market or trading? Trading is not investing per se. You're investing your money when you take the trade, but it's for a short-term temporary period. That's it. What do you want to know about Netflix? There's nothing wrong with this. Another day that had an anomaly day that literally went nowhere. Because to tell you, the day that ne the day that the market got down, Netflix could have dropped all the way down to like $75 or $70 and gapped down to something crazy. It did gap down. It did open at $88.75. And the day before it closed at $103, basically $104-ish. So this gap down 15 bucks on the day of the anomaly. But Netflix is a high flyer, even at the price point since this did the split. And Netflix could have gone way more than that on the day of the anomaly. So another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chart. We'll make a new high from the end of the year in Netflix with the market. I just don't know when this has earnings out again or when it gaps again, but this is a long. And it's, you know, a good one. All right, this was a good, good, this was good to do tonight. So this is actually was very helpful. Uh, I got I got a lot of questions from some of the same people. If we do it again, some of you can answer, ask more questions of some of the older people. But did you like doing this tonight? I felt it was more interactive. And, and hopefully you learned something. You didn't really learn anything specific about my strategy other than the fact that your takeaway from tonight is that if you have a system that you believe in and replicate day after day, it is much, much easier and more fun for you to trade and make money. You will find that you make money easier because you are less stressed and it matters and plays a part in it. 
You'll never be able to take 8,500 shares of something like I did with HPQ if you're stressed out. Even if you have the money, you won't be able to if you're stressed out because you'd be too scared that it might not work. But if you have a system that you replicate every day, then and you believe works and know that works, whether it's 70% or 75% or 80% and you know that it works, you won't be stressed about taking the trade. And if it doesn't work, then you just take the one loss. And if it does, then you're making two, three R's. And you see how that adds up. And that's how you become a profitable trader. And you really got to get to that point. So if you're not at a place in your trading where you're profitable, consider taking my class. I'm running a great offer through tomorrow. And then you learn how to trade before the end of the calendar year 2015. And you can go into 2016 then and start to trade live. You're welcome. Uh, I have 26 points, but I'm looking for 20. Easy to figure out? Yes, it takes about three to five minutes when I'm reading the gap. If you're brand new, it might take you eight to 10 minutes per gap, but it takes about three to five. Randall's asking, but Randall, I don't, I don't rate everything on here. First of all, I usually just look at the shorts. So right there, I'm narrowing it down to 40, okay? And then I'll scan and go through all of these, and some of these are just nothing or they're too cheap. Like I don't do penny stocks either. Like I looked at this ARO actually as earnings out this week. It's unfortunate. I won't trade this even if it gaps down. It's a penny stock. It's not even worth a dollar. It's sad. Sad actually. I don't know whatever has happened to this. But I don't, I don't, I also just take out things for volume. I volume requirements, Randall, and price requirements. And so like I won't do this. So that automatically takes a lot out too. Kathy, can you put in the link how to join tomorrow? E. Nickerman has a question. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight. If you're interested in signing up for the Cyber Monday special, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. 25% off. I've never done that before, so it's a good deal. It saves you almost $1,000, and you'll learn how to trade before the end of the calendar year. Come in the room tomorrow, and we'll see what we get. Usually be focused on one thing. That's what I like to do. All right, have a good night, everyone. You're welcome. <laughs>